Greetings! I am Herbert Erbaderp, and today I'm going to build this King Tiger. Before I begin, I would like to say a big thank you to my patrons. It's because of them that I was able to buy this kit. Many thanks to you excellent folk. Okay, so this is the 28mm or 156 scale plastic model from Warlord Games, as you can probably see on the box. The back of the box has a few paragraphs about the King Tiger, a kind of ad for tank war, an image of the included decals, stat cards and damage markers, and two images of this model all painted up. I think they've done a good job demonstrating the variations that you can make with this kit. Inside the box we find a plastic bag with three sprues inside of it. I actually kind of prefer them to be packaged this way, rather than a bag for each sprue because there's less waste. The plastic in this kit, as with most of Warlord's plastic kits, is made by Atalari, and it's pretty decent. At this point I've built quite a few of their kits, and I feel like it's reasonable to expect crisp, neatly moulded sprues. This kit certainly doesn't disappoint there. The detailing is quite good, though there are some compromises, most likely in the interests of simplifying the moulding process. I can't complain about that too much because everything looks pretty good anyway. There are quite a few optional parts in this kit, and I had initially thought that you could build the model with both turrets. Unfortunately, that isn't the case. So, having to make a choice, I decided I would build the Henschel turret, but we'll see that later. Also included in the box is this instruction booklet. This is quite good. The diagrams are clear and easily understood. There are different sections for the two different turrets to avoid confusion, and there's a basic painting guide in the back. You also get this baggie of stuff, with which to make fire and smoke markers. And this set of decals. There's a good variety of markings here. And of course this stat card with relevant information about the King Tiger for when you play bolt action with it. The same card is used for both versions of the tank. Now let's build it. The instructions say to start with the tracks, and because I'm not feeling especially rebellious I decide to go with that. I lay out all the parts roughly where they'll go on. I'm mostly concerned with not getting the end track parts mixed up, though they are slightly different in size, so it's not a huge worry. When I mentioned compromises in detail before, this is what I meant. The road wheels, all being moulded as one part of the hull side, doesn't look all that great. It's fine if you look at it directly from the side, but the wheels are all connected to each other when there should be space between them. Clearly this is to make things easier in both moulding the sprues and in building the kit. I don't really like it, though it is a minor complaint and not a deal breaker, and it shouldn't be too obvious once the model is completed. Anyway, I glue the inner drive sprocket into place. There are two guide pins to help position this. The sprocket teeth should face in towards the road wheels. Next comes the outer part of the sprocket. There is a D-shaped keying on this part, but it's not especially good. The result of that is there's a lot of play in this. It's not really a big problem. I use the inner sprocket part as a guide and make sure the teeth on both parts line up. It doesn't have to be perfect at all, we just don't want the teeth interfering with the tracks. I then add the idler wheel. This also has some not so tight D-shaped keying, so there's a lot of play here too. The only reason this matters is that the idler wheel has a slot in the top of it for the upper track part to lock into. So I use that track part to make sure it's lined up properly. Easy enough I suppose. Now we might as well add the tracks. I decided to start with the lower run because of reasons. The tracks have tabs on them that will link into the slots on the road wheels. This makes it very easy to get the positioning correct. The guide teeth have spaces cut out for the road wheels, so they should sit against the tracks. The fit isn't quite perfect here and there is a tiny gap, but I'm not too worried about that. It's really hard to see. I then glue on the top run of tracks. There are guide tabs and slots here just like on the lower set, and it's very easy to get this into place. It looks like one of the guide horns here is broken. I thought maybe it was like that to accommodate the road wheel, but I'm pretty sure it's just a bit of a miscast. I guess we could get away with calling it battle damage though. Then the end parts need to be installed. This is pretty easy. I hadn't yet glued down the ends of the longer track parts, and the track end parts have a tab on each end, so it can slip into place pretty easily. I then added glue. The benefit of using Tamiya Extra Thin means that it will just seep in between the joins. 
I think I managed to glue this part on upside down, but unless you look really closely, you can't really tell. The end part goes onto the rear of the assembly in pretty much exactly the same way, and I think I managed to install this part the right way up. The result is pretty decent, looks very much like a track set for a King Tiger, strangely enough. I glue together the other track set and then attach them both to the lower hull. This is made easy by the slots and guide tabs that ensure these go on correctly, though I did find I had to clean a little bit of flash out of the slots, but that's not really a big deal. I apply pressure to the parts to be sure there are no gaps at either end of the hull. The hull rear should then be added. On the instructions, it does look as though you could put the hull rear part on before the track sets, but I think it would be much easier to get it lined up properly if you wait until the tracks are on. The part goes on very easily. I add glue in behind the part so it seeps into the gaps and bonds the part without making any mess on the outside. Looks like a King Tiger butt to me. Very good. Now it's time to move on to the upper hull. I add the hull machine gun by inserting it in through the MG port, strangely enough. It mounts into this hole on the inside. It's a bit fiddly, but clearly it's not impossible to do. I add glue to make sure it stays put. This reminds me of the Warlord Panther A, and not in a good way. There should be a piece of shielding around the gun barrel and we shouldn't be able to see in past it. It's not really a huge issue like it would be were Warlord touting this as an extremely detailed display piece or something. It is a little annoying though. Anyway, at this point we need to make a choice. If you want to build the King Tiger with the early turret, you'll need to drill out the holes around the turret opening here into which the turret ring protector would be attached. That would interfere with the Henschel turret which is the version I want to build, so I skip this step. Unfortunately, this means it would be hard to build this model with both turrets, which wouldn't have been easy in the first place. Oh well, I move on to adding more of the hull details. I add hatches for the driver and hull gunner. These are pretty easy to install. The shape of them makes it more or less impossible to put them on the wrong side of the model, unless you're really determined. And they can of course be modelled open or closed, but I prefer closed. Then come some tools. This hammer goes on the tank's left side. It fits into the two mounting holes very easily. I added the glue after inserting the part on this side, and on the right side I added glue before installing the axe. Both of these tools are very easy to get into place. I then add some vision devices. We all like to be able to see, don't we? These are a little bit fiddly and took quite a bit of nudging to get them facing the direction I wanted them to. Perhaps using tweezers instead of fat fingers would have been a good idea. I'm pretty sure the little rectangular bit inside the vision devices should be facing forward. Next comes the headlamp. This isn't too hard to install, though it did take me a little bit of nudging until I was satisfied with how it was sitting. It looks pretty decent, but it would have been nice if the power cable that should be running from the light up to the top of the hull was moulded on. I'm not going to add one at this point. Then on the engine deck I add this bumpy disc. Is it a ventilator? Whatever it is it has two guide pins and easily fits into place here. The slightly flattened edge of the disc should be facing towards the front of the tank. Then comes this fire extinguisher. Again, there are two guide pins that make installing this quite easy. The little square bit on top of the fire extinguisher should face in towards the middle of the tank. It's then time to join the upper and lower hull together. This week I'm doing it at the time the instructions say to, and I hope this pleases the modelling gods. There's not really a lot to guide this, so I take my time and try to get everything lined up nice and neatly, starting with the pointy part of the hull front. I apply pressure to minimise the gap, there is a little bit of a dent in the plastic there, but we can claim that's damage to the Zimmerit. When that's set, I add glue to the rear and make sure it's as gap free as I can make it. Next it's time for the hull sides. There are guide slots to help position these. They did have a little bit of flash in them that needed to be removed, but that's easily done. The first part went on with no issue, until I realised that I also wanted to add the side skirts, and in order to do that you need to drill out three holes on the side parts. That's okay, I still drilled out the holes on the part for the right side, and I glued that one into place just as easily as the one on the left, and then I attached the side skirt. Maybe you can see the guide nubs here, maybe not. I add a bunch of glue and then the guide nubs help me get the positioning right. It was very easy. 
The part is bowed a tiny bit, so I needed to apply pressure at the front and rear so the part would sit nicely against the hull at both ends. Then I add the left side skirt, which I had trimmed the guide nubs off of. Without the guides I have to eyeball the fit which does make it a little bit more tricky, but I got there in the end, and it wasn't too hard. Of course, the side skirts are optional so I could have just left them off, but I wanted them on. Next I add these shackles to the front of the tank. I put these on before the front fenders because I feel like the fenders would interfere with installing these shackles. They should be installed with the bolt bit protruding in towards the centre of the tank. I glue them on. You could leave these loose so they dangle about realistically, but I think they would be easy to bump off and lose, and that would be annoying. I then add the shovels. There's nothing too tricky about this. The shovel simply slots into the two holes at the front of the hull, and there's one for either side. Two shovels for twice the digging. Then it's time for fenders. These go on really easily, though they don't quite look as though they fit perfectly. That's probably kind of realistic. I'm sure these were very easy to knock out of shape during normal operation. These parts, like the side skirts, are optional. I like the look of them, so I added them. Moving to the rear of the tank, I add these. I think they're track tensioning tools. One should be positioned with its opening facing upwards and the other, I threw it on the ground. But it can also be attached with its opening facing downward. It's very easy to install these if you don't drop them. It's then time for exhaust pipes. It doesn't matter which one goes on which side, though they are keyed so that you can't put them on upside down. You upside down exhaust weirdos. Next, these exhaust covers. There are pins to guide these. Those pins are the same on each part, but they're both different parts. The part with the two brackety things should be installed on the right side of the tank, though the instructions don't make that especially clear. They're very easy to install and I think they look good. I then add the shackles to the rear. Butt shackles? These go on just as easily as the two on the front of the model did. Then I install the jack. It goes in horizontally under the exhausts. Nothing much to this really. After that come the rear mud guards. There's a nub on the back of these that goes into a hole on the hull rear above the tracks. These are pretty simple to get into place, and I don't think they have to be perfectly aligned with each other. These are parts that would get bumped and bent out of shape pretty easily I would think. And that's the hull complete. It shouldn't be a surprise that it's now time to work on the turret. Initially it looked as though this kit includes enough parts to build both the Henschel and Porsche turrets, but there are a couple of small parts that you would need for both turrets, of which only one is included in the kit. Like hatches, machine gun rings and most importantly, the part that holds the gun mantlet onto the turret front. Normally I would find that kind of frustrating, but the hull needs different parts for different turrets as well, so I'm not especially worried about it. The first thing I did was to attach the gun mantlet to the front of the turret. This is a little bit fiddly, but not too hard. There's this back part of the gun, for lack of better words, that should slot into the back of the gun mantlet. This is keyed so it only fits one way, so when doing this be sure that you're attaching the mantlet in such a way that the overhang with the hole in it is on the tank's right side. I apply force to make sure the parts are joined together properly, and it can take a fair bit of force to do this. I test fit against the hull side part so I have some idea of how the gun elevation will look, and then I glue the assembly together. This can be glued together in such a way that the gun elevates and depresses, but I think that will just result in a gun that flops around and who wants that? Nobody, that's who. I glue the gun backing part on just to give it a bit of extra strength, even though it's not really needed unless you want a movable gun barrel. I put that assembly aside and start building the structure of the turret. I add the left side first. This is pretty easy. There's keying to help you get it straight, though to be certain that it's aligned properly, I use the turret rear as a gauge before the glue dries so that I can make any adjustments that I might need to. Then it only makes sense to glue the turret rear on. If this joint is straight then the rest of them should also be straight. Easy enough. Then comes the right side of the turret, and I'm confident this will be straight. Next comes the turret front. I do test fit to be sure, but because all of the other parts are nice and straight, this can pretty much just drop right into place with no issue. I add glue around the mounting points for the roof, and then I click it into place. It's a little bit more fiddly than models where you glue a floor into a turret top, but it's not too hard to do and I think it looks good. 
I suspect they've done it this way, so the Zimmerit details can be moulded onto the parts more easily. Looks decent enough, but it does need some more things. Like this ventilator, or at least that's what I think it is. This part is keyed so it only goes on one way. I'm sure the turret crew will be especially thankful for this addition. Next, there are three lifting rings that need to be installed. These are, as you can see, very tiny and tweezers are really helpful here. I like to add glue to these parts before putting them in the holes. I do like that these are quite fine parts, but that does make them easy to break or lose. Fortunately, there are a couple of extras if you're building the Henschel turret. I then attach the machine gun ring. This is pretty easy and there are guide pins to help installation. Not much to say about this. After that, I install the commander's hatch. You can of course model this open or closed, and there is a commander you can put in there if you want to. Obviously, as usual, I have chosen not to. The loader's hatch is glued into place next. There's some nice detail on the inside of this in case you want to model it open, which is always a nice touch. The spaces around the hatches aren't perfectly even, but I think it looks decent enough anyway. I could then put the machine gun on here, but well, I just don't really like this part. It's kind of flimsy and not as detailed as I would like it to be and I'm convinced it will break off really easily, and it probably makes the model a little bit too tall for my transport bag, so I left it off. Next I add some spare track links. There are 8 sets of these and they're very easy to install. You could leave all or some of these off if you would prefer, but then you would either have to fill in the mounting holes, or for more realism, add some hooks to where they would be hanging. I like them so I've added them all. And finally, the main gun. This part is keyed so it only goes on one way, and initially it didn't fit, so I trimmed down the mounting pin on the end of the barrel, and it slid into place easily after that. I give it a bit of a nudge so that it's as straight as possible and that's it, turret complete. I really like that the end of the gun has a hole in it already. It saves me a little bit of drilling work, which is always nice. So with that, the Warlord King Tiger is now complete. This is a really cool tank. Unfortunately, I don't have another Tiger II in this scale with which to compare this model. That's okay. I don't think I really need more than one, but me being me, I will likely buy another one if another plastic kit in this scale is released. I really enjoyed this build and I am quite happy with the results, though I do have some complaints. My main gripe is that there are almost enough parts to make both the Henschel and Porsche turret. By the way, I do know that it's technically incorrect to call it a Porsche turret. Porsche didn't actually make it, but that is what it's commonly known as now. It's kind of like the Hetzer, so deal with it, I guess. Either way, it's kind of annoying to have almost all of the parts for both turrets only to be missing some little things like the commander's hatch and the bit that holds the gun in place. Even though you need to add the protective ring to make the early version of the tank, it would still be nice to be able to make both turrets. Oh well, I guess that just means my bits box gets a few extra parts. It might actually come in handy for a post-apocalyptic build or something like that. Also, the hull machine gun is a little bit poo, just like the one on the Panther A, and the road wheels all being moulded as one connected part. Both of those are minor issues, really. I can deal with them and they don't detract from my enjoyment of the model. The road wheels, particularly, are fairly well hidden by shadow. Complaining aside, this is a really nice kit. It was very easy to build, and the instructions were clear and easily understood. The only part I was really uncertain of was which exhaust cover should go on which side, but you can tell which is which in the instructions if you look closely. I'm very happy to have this mighty beast for my Germans, and I'm sure they're very happy to be getting big armoured kitty cats like this. I don't plan on painting this model right away, but I would like to know how you guys would like to see it painted. I'm kind of thinking that ambush camo scheme that you often see King Tigers painted in, with all the spots and stuff, but it's always a good idea to consider other ideas. Leave your suggestions or any other questions or comments you might have in the comment section below. And of course, if you haven't done so already, feel free to subscribe to me here on YouTube, follow me on social media and watch me live stream on Twitch. And if you really like the things I do, please consider helping to support the channel over at Patreon. It's thanks to my patrons that I could make this video to begin with, and their support is really appreciated. So thanks once again guys. I shall return soon, so until then, be excellent to each other, happy modelling and thanks for watching. Farewell.